Good evening. This is a follow-up video to my previous video on HPPD and DP recovery. So in that last video, I think I covered well enough for my comfort level how I got HPPD and DP, but I didn't elaborate on a couple things. Um, so I'm hoping to do that here um, in line with some questions that I got on the first video. The first thing that people wanted to know more about were my symptoms. I believe in the first video I talked about how I had the usual list of symptoms that you might find when you look online and compare to others such as visual static, halos, trails, blue light and topic phenomenon, all of which contributing to that feeling of depersonalization or being stuck behind your eyes. Um, one thing I didn't highlight though was that I suffered from anxiety. Uh, panic, uh, insomnia, um, all at first. And um, that's important to mention because I'm going to be elaborating on the role that those played in the whole complex of HPPD and DP. Um, another thing people want to know about as a side note um, is whether or not I ever had a flashback. Um, no, I did not ever have a flashback. And in the same vein, people want to know if I am completely restored. From these symptoms. I only occasionally and momentarily notice some visual symptoms. Since I no longer attach any importance to them, they are transient, dissipating from my perception quickly. So I don't feel the need to practice any therapeutic techniques presently, and so I consider myself completely recovered for that reason. Uh, visual snow is really the only thing that I notice um, at night, mainly from time to time, but yeah, not nearly as much as I used to. Um, I used to see it all over any dark surface, even during the day. Um, you know, and I, you know, I think it's perfectly normal to see a degree of this. Uh, my girlfriend, my friends, uh, who've never felt they've had HPPD or DP, can see a degree of visual snow in their vision. I think that, to an extent, it's perfectly normal. And so, you know, the fact that I still see it, I don't think that that's a sign that I still have HPPD or DP especially if I'm not suffering from that. To kind of paraphrase, another question I got was, what do you think causes HPPD? Uh, I think I touched on this in the first video, but maybe it was a bit indirect in the wording. So just to kind of recap, but also elaborate further uh, from a high level, it is my theory that HPPD and DP are perceptual disorders stemming from maladaptive attentional bias, which is rooted in a vicious fear cycle. So let's unpack this a little bit. Psychedelics cause you to focus internally by entertaining you with their side effects. This is fine, but since our natural tendency is to focus externally, encouraging a tendency to focus internally through repeated use of psychedelics can cause changes to our baseline perception moving forward which can clash with our historical baseline, causing us to feel different or disordered. And we feel this way primarily because there is noise in this new perceptual vein that was previously filtered out. That's importance was collaterally raised in the hierarchy of our attention when our baseline perception shifted to be more internally focused, as I just mentioned. By fearing this noise, we keep it in a raised position in our perception. Stop fearing your symptoms and you will perceptually forget about them. Forget about your symptoms and you will effectively recover. Um, this was the message of my last video. One symptom that people seem to want to focus on in particular was the general numb feeling that comes with all this. The general diminishing of your senses. You should know that your senses have not been diminished or damaged. Your brain is just preoccupied with itself, internally focused causing you to subconsciously pay less attention to your senses. Once you train your brain to prioritize focusing on the outside world again, focusing externally, your senses will naturally come back as strong as ever. What causes people to experience this more than others? Further, what causes some to get and to stay stuck in this condition longer than others? Generally, after doing drugs, there is going to be a natural refractory period in which your brain's receptors are desensitized and need a bit of time to bounce back. This is, this is normal. They've been exerted um, beyond their natural levels. Everyone's brains are different to an extent, as is common knowledge. 
while we are all human and share the same fundamental abilities of being human, each of these attributes has a spectrum along which we can differ from each other. For example, you can very explicitly observe that people vary in height, weight, appearance, and physical talent, speed, endurance, flexibility. Um, human brains differ from each other just the same. With this in mind, it is not a stretch to understand how different people's brains can have different reactions to drugs. Uh, how some people can do psychedelic drugs and bounce right back while others who are not as durable experience a refractory period before feeling normal again. And some a uh, long refractory period. But then this begs the question, why are you still feeling this way after many years? Um, why hasn't your brain bounced back? By the same token, people differ along personality traits. Um, those high in introversion, um, natural tendency to focus internally, um, and those high in neuroticism, natural tendency to obsess over insecurities, are relatively more susceptible to HPVD and DEP as a result of drug usage. You can become psychosomatically stuck in your symptoms because you reinforce them with the hypervigilant attention you give them. If you are obsessing over the potential permanence of your condition 24-7, your symptoms are always going to be top of mind and they will never sink back into the depths of your perception from which they came. You have to allow yourself the bandwidth to relearn how to filter out this noise. So once stuck, how do you break out? The key is forgetting. As I mentioned in my first video, and as I recapped at the beginning of this video, fear or anxiety is the motivator here. If you are afraid of your symptoms, afraid of what you have done to yourself, then you are going to be on the lookout for your symptoms because you have deemed them a threat. Before long, noticing your symptoms becomes a procedural habit, which will persist for as long as fear motivates the vicious cycle. Since the symptoms are the cause of the continued fear and the continued fear is the cause of the continued symptoms, this condition is a vicious cycle. Um, so diffusing this fear, is in essence the cure because once you do, you can finally forget about your symptoms. However, doing this is definitely no easy task um, by any stretch of the imagination. This is a battle between your higher brain and your lower brain, um, the lower parts of your brain that regulate fear. And one does not control the other. Research suggests they are in constant competition. So the best thing you can do is put yourself in an environment that allows your higher brain to win this competition through a positive perspective an environment with minimal triggers so that you will not spiral deeper into the cycle of fear. The classical example of this, I think, would be therapy. However, it can prove challenging to find a therapist that sufficiently understands the disorders of HPPD and DP. On the other hand, I think the primary example of a negative environment that will reinforce the fear and cause you to spiral further and harder um, is internet forums, wherein people share symptoms and negative anecdotes about the condition. And this pessimistic social proof wrongly convinces you that you will never recover from this. You will. You will if you heed my advice and apply it. Abstinence from internet research is very important here. And while I know you found me through YouTube, most videos and internet forums are not going to preach recovery because the ones who have recovered are generally silent. Participating in all of this and that would be counterproductive to their moving forward. So I urge you to cut yourself off from these videos and forums. Um, they are hurting you. Once again, they are feeding the fear that drives HPPD and DP, that vicious cycle I was talking about before. Reading through all the comments and emails, uh, I was a lot like a lot of the people who watched my first video when I was struggling with this. Uh, I fought myself and tore myself to pieces for years over it. Uh, it was ugly business. Um, and worse yet, it was completely pointless, I've come to find. Uh, I did years of research uh, and it was, it was totally meaningless in terms of helping me with any sort of recovery. Um, what are some other coping mechanisms? Uh, beyond this, beyond the general advice to forget your symptoms, to do what you can to pull the rug out from under this vicious cycle, I found distraction to work best for me initially. Shifting your perspective can also help. Anything you can do to keep your mind off your symptoms is great because it enables you to evolve past your maladaptive thought patterns. Once you figure this out, you will feel more secure and any secondary anxiety should also dissipate. 
But the primary thing to bear in mind is if you still notice a visual symptom from time to time, understand that this is trivial. Take away your symptoms power, their importance this way, um, and you will notice them less and less over time. When I was at the crux of my recovery, I developed a habit of internally shushing myself whenever I began to think about my symptoms or condition. So anytime I felt the urge to overthink a symptom that I was noticing, I would just shh that explicit thought. I would silence it then and there, and it would keep it from snowballing into a larger rabbit hole of thought that was just counterproductive to my recovery. Uh, it was hard to keep it up at first, um, over time, this initially manual thought became a procedural reflex, and I effectively broke the obsessive thought loop. Self-conditioning might sound crazy or impossible, um, but I think it helped a lot in this case, because it did become a habit. Anytime I started to overthink, I would shush myself. It became very easy. Meditation is obviously helpful with this um, as well, because it is fundamentally helping you pull your mind out of its present state. Um, reshaping thought habits. When I was struggling at my worst, I practiced a simple method of meditation wherein I would focus on deep breathing initially. And then once that became relatively automatic, I would repeat the word healing to myself over and over. Anytime I felt my mind stray from this, I would pull it back. Worried thoughts about my symptoms would try to creep up, but I would interrupt their ascent with the, the word healing. Kind of in a similar way, I would shush. So yeah, like as I'm sure you're figuring out now, a big piece of my personal recovery at least was just learning to master my anxiety, learning to set up guardrails around my psyche to an extent to keep out the negative thoughts that were keeping me stuck. Um, and ultimately that's what allowed me to break free from all this and to move back into the external world from behind my eyes and reintegrate and be much happier <laughs> for it. One viewer of my last video, AJ0101395, um, commented about Vipassana meditation. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but it preaches a mantra of what we resist will continue to persist. Take the middle way. Don't crave what feels good. Don't push away what feels bad. Being present to it without reacting will change your relationship to it. I think this is a really applicable thing for someone struggling with HPVD or DP because it encourages you to face what is bothering you and become comfortable with it. And in doing so, you take away any fear associated with it and effectively any suffering caused by it. Um, something else kind of in this vein, but is sort of extremely controversial, uh, is a immersion therapy, right? So HPPD DP is in a way a form of post-traumatic stress. Um, being the chronic stress you've incurred and continuously re-experienced post versus pre-bad drug experience. Uh, immersion therapy works notoriously well as a PTSD treatment. After I got HPVD and DP, I personally feared and demonized drugs and didn't touch anything for years. Um, and uh, overall, it's hard to say if that was a good decision or not. Um, my mentality was definitely far too obsessive to be healthy, but not being on drugs kept my state of mind stable, which enabled me to rebalance myself. Um, when I finally did end up doing drugs again, um, mainly just like smoking, the experiences were effectively immersion therapy for me. Um, and I was finally able to let go of the deep, deep fear that held me back for so long and that was contributing to this vicious cycle, contributing to keeping me stuck um, in, my, in the torment of HPPD and DP. So my advice to you is to stay off of drugs until your mind is balanced again. Um, this will take some time, but do so with the understanding that abstinence is not a direct answer to recovery here. Doing the drug, any drug, 
it's not going to set you back in your recovery as I see a lot on these forums. Because while drugs may have been the catalyst for this condition, they are, they are not what is keeping you stuck. Ultimately, it is my position that this condition is psychological. So technically, you could do drugs if you can process them effectively enough, um, for lack of a better word. I urge you to rewatch the last minute of my first video where I hint that certain personality traits inherently react negatively to psych psychoactive drugs um, and reflect on yourself, your situation with this in mind.